Hi everyone, Melanie here from Balloon Artworks and today I'm going to be making my bride and bride sculpture. Quite a few of you have been requesting this video and as I've got an order for a bride and bride I thought I would may as well make the video whilst I'm making um, a real piece. So uh, here we go. I've got my photograph down here just to remind me of what I've done in the past. Um, I like to, as much as possible, mix things up a bit, change things, and I try not to make the same thing twice. I like to put variations in. So it may be slightly different, the sculpture may be slightly different from what you've seen in the past, but um, we'll go with it and see how it goes. So grab yourself a 260 in whatever colour you like. This one happens to be Wildberry and I've got perhaps four fingers of tail there. I honestly don't worry too much about how much I inflate my balloons. I use a range of different uh, pumps. I use a hand pump, I use my filbert, I use my um, twin air. So I use a range of different things and so I would encourage you not to get too hung up on how many um, you know strokes of the hand pump or how how long the tail is that you've got on your balloon. Just learn to be flexible, and if you put too much air in, let a bit out. If there's not enough in, put a bit more in. So this is a really versatile medium. So I, I know in the early days, it's a bit of a fixation. It was for me, <laughs> you know, when I was watching training videos and uh, you know wanted to know how much of a tail there was, but really don't don't worry about it too much so what we're going to do is we're going to make um the trouser suit so one of our brides is wearing a, a trouser suit so we're going to make that first so um make yourself a um flower petal loop of about whoa we don't want her to have too big really big shoulders that's about three fingers and then give it a twist and slip the nozzle through that, um, the hole to um, just secure it. And then make yourself another flower petal twist. So that's what you've got. And then we want to make two small pinch twists. And make yourself a small bubble and just pinch twist it. Put that on one side and then make another one about the same size and just pinch twist that. So that's what you've got. Give your balloon a little squeeze and come down about four fingers or so. And then make two more small pinch twists. So a little bubble and just pinch twist it. Okay. That's what you've got. And then we want to come down about six fingers or so and see what I mean I'm at the end of my balloon here so what I'm going to do I'm just going to snip off the end and let a bit of air out and then I'm just going to tie that off okay. so come down and make a foot so you've got a loop there of perhaps about six, seven fingers and a little loop for the foot. And then make another small bubble and just pinch twist that. And then this we can just break off. So grab yourself another balloon if you need to. I have to say, I don't know what you find, but I tend to find these wild berries. I, I don't get as much length out of them as some of the other balloons. Um, so if you've gone something with a colour, maybe a rose pink, you might find that you can get the whole of the body out of one balloon. But it, it doesn't really matter. So we're making another leg. We're making another little foot of maybe three fingers or so and then we're making another small bubble and pinch twisting that okay that's what we've got and then we can just cut off the end 
and then I just like to wrap, use the end to wrap those two pinch twists together. And if you have used an extra balloon, keep this tail nice and long because we may as well save it. We're going to need an attachment point to put this on a base, so we may as well use something that we've already got. So that's our trouser suit. So next, grab yourself a six, six inch quick link. Uh, this one is mocha brown and you want to inflate it maybe to about three and a half inches. There you go. And then we just want to wrap that into the two pinch twists at the neck. Now for the hair, so grab a 260 of whatever colour your bride's hair is and just wrap the nozzle into the two neck pinch twists. And then, whoop, <laughs> it's alive. And then we're just gonna give the balloon a squeeze. and make a loop, bring it up to the um, tip of the quick link, uh, make a little bubble and make a pinch twist. Okay. And give a squeeze again, we want to make another bubble that matches this one. So just bring it down to the neck and just wrap that into there. Okay. And then we want to go up and down, perhaps three more times, see how it goes. We want to fill in the, the back of the head. So just up and down, however many times you need to. As much as possible, I try to reflect the uh, features and, and hairstyle uh, of my brides. And uh, as, again, as much as possible, their style of, of dress. So I'm going to take that up one more time. And the balloon's starting to feel a little bit tight. So I'm just going to snip the end a little bit. Take that bubble up to the top and just try and get exactly the size of bubble that I want. Tie it off and then just wrap it in at the top. So to finish off our bride's hair, you're going to need a 160. So wrap that in at the top there. So you're just going to bring that down. Trying to remember which side our bride has her party on. Yes, about halfway, a little over halfway maybe and twist off a section, an uninflated section of your 160. So just keep twisting, That's provided you want to do the hairstyle this way. And then you're going to feed your 160 just through this bubble here. And just pull it through, okay? So we've got her fringe just going across a little bit there. And then keep on twisting until you've got a nice long uninflated bit that you can stretch down into the back of the neck. Need to go a bit more. So I'm going to make a loop longish loop and then I am going to come back up and I'm just going to do quite a short candy cane. So now I'm going to make the bride's arms and I've tied my mocha brown to my blush um, 160 and I'm just going to make a little pinch twist in each. Now I do make the arms slightly differently um, depending on how I'm going to pose the sculpture. So 
the way this sculpture is going to um, be posed, our brides are going to be holding hands and in their hands, each hand, they're going to be, they're going to have a little flower. So their actual hand is going to be disguised uh, quite a bit. If you wanted to do it differently, you could just do a little loop like this and put a pinch twist on. If you wanted to show more of a hand, I, I don't because I want the flower to be more visible. Also, if you were, if your couple, if your brides were both Caucasian, uh, you could quite simply start, imagine this is the nozzle end, start at the nozzle end, yeah. make your hand and then work that way. Um, but, um, but we've got a, uh, a bride that's Caucasian, we've got a bride that is of colour, so we're doing it slightly differently. So what I want to do is now make a little arm, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a bend in the arm, I'm going to try and judge as best I can the length of the arm needs to be. I tend to like to have them round about waist level wrap that into the neck and then we want to make another arm that is the same length as closely as possible. That one's a little bit longer. I'm going to do that and I'm going to put my pinch twist in there and catch and everything. Okay. And then I'm going to break that off. leave a little tail and I'm just going to tie that there and for the moment this is all we're going to do with our first bride we're now going to move on to our second bride so we're going to make our second bride uh, we're going to start off exactly the same way we did our first so a small three petal um, uh, flower loop make a second one and then make two small bubbles and pinch twist those and position a bubble on either side of the flower pestle twists. Okay, like that. And then you're going to come down, you want a smallish body, shortish body, perhaps about four fingers or so, and then you want to make three smallish bubbles and pinch twist those at the waist. Okay. Now at this point I'm just going to grab my other bride. Uh, these two brides are a similar sort of height so I just want to measure off. I don't want them to be um, out of proportion. So I've made one bubble and then I've made another bubble. I'm going to make another bubble there and then I'm going to bring this back up, give my balloon stretch and I'm going to make another bubble to match this one. Wrap that in at the waist and then I'm going to need a second balloon anyway so I'm just going to get rid of this at this point. It's the most um, convenient point, point for me to do that. So grab a second 260. I happen to be using um, ivory silk you use whatever you know colours you like to look up it suits your brides and I'm gonna make a third bubble to match this one here I'm gonna make another bubble I'm gonna position that there and then I'm gonna make another small bubble and this is gonna go back up here and into the waist. And at this point we can now, I've done these skirts differently uh, in the past. Um, if you've got a bride that's got a fuller um, bridal gown, you could do a flower weave. I've done that um, in the past as well. So it just depends what you want to do.
Okay, so next we want uh, our six inch quick link. This one's blush. And again, similar size to last time, perhaps three and a half, maybe four inches. And just wrap it in. And we want our bride's hair. We want 260. Give it a squeeze. Wrap the nozzle into that neck area. And then we're going to do the same. Go up and down. Wrapping in to that uh, quick link tip at the top, making a small bubble and then a pinch twist. And then we're going to go back down again, and then up and down another couple of times. Grab your 160 and wrap it in to that pinch twist at the top. Now, this bride has a different sort of hairstyle going on. She's got a hair, well, it is a different style. It's kind of, it's kind of like that. So what I've done, I've got, brought the balloon down round, holding it in snugly at the back, I'm just looping it round and bringing it up. So you can do all sorts of different hairstyles and um, the thing to do is to just experiment. So next we want to put the arms onto our second princess. Did I say princess? Have I been saying princess? I mean bride. <laughs> I've not been saying princess throughout this video. <laughs> So we take our original bride, we take our second bride, and I'm going to put the arms onto the second bride. So we're going to want some arms that are the same sort of length to the original one, very similar sort of length. Give a little shock twist, twist it off there, and then we're just going to wrap that into the neck. Round. and then we're going to make another arm again similar sort of length Just another little bubble make our little hand and then what we want to do we want these two hands to be holding one another so just wrap them around one another and then you can break this off. One thing I should have done perhaps before I attach the arms was finish off the skirt so I'll do that now. Grab whatever colour you want in 160 I've got a, a gold and you just want to wrap your 160 into the waist and then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the balloon up and again into the waist and back down and then we're kind of come oops, give it a squeeze and down and just wrap it so that it's just kind of nestling at that point between those two bubbles and I'll wrap it into the waist again, bring it round and we want to do that for each section of the dress. So you want your you want your 160 to be reasonably soft. And we'll do that again. Wrap up here, wrap it into the waist. Just want it to be sitting on that join between those two bubbles. And then we've got one last bubble to do. I'm going to stretch that out a little bit. I think I should just be able to get my last bubble out of what I've got. So I'm bringing that up and wrapping it into the waist. 
Okay, so I'm going to make some little gold shoes. I've just got a, a scrap of 160, just make a very small bubble and then make a bigger bubble. So your first bubble is perhaps a finger and a half. Your second bubble is perhaps three fingers. Just bring them together and then use that nozzle just to pinch twist them. Okay, and those are going to be our little shoes and <laughs> just break this off. Easier said than done sometimes. And then we just want to make another pair. So take a 160 and blush and we just want to wrap that around the, uh, the two pinch twisted bubbles and you've got two little shoes there. We want to make some legs and this, the design here is that this um, bride, she's, she's very happy and she's kicking out her legs. So we just want a pair of quite small legs. So I'm actually going to make two bubbles like that. I'm going to wrap the second pair of shoes into that um, bubble there and then we're going to thread these up through the dress. Might have to move um, some of these loops that we carefully positioned. <laughs> we're going to have to move them out of the way. And I'm just going to thread one, one leg through one loop. use these tails just to hold them in position. So the legs don't need to go all the way to the top, they're just kind of nestled there to about that point. And you can put these loops back over. Don't worry if things um, move out of position because we've still got a way to go and um, things need to be placed on the base. So things are going to move around quite a bit more still. Okay, so now we're going to add some little um, elements to the hairstyles. So I've got a couple of little pinch twists here and I'm just going to pop them in the end of the, um, the braid here. And then I've got a little um, puff inflated 160. So uh, this bride has got some um, nice highlights in her hair so I'm just going to try and uh, reflect reflect those in the uh, in the design so I'm taking my puff inflated 160 I'm just going to wrap it into the neck and then I'm just going to bring it round to kind of trace round the line of the braid the line of the um, candy cane and then just bring it back into the neck. I have another puff inflated 160 and what I'm going to do is just take the nozzle end with the knot and I'm just going to tuck it under here so that little uh, bit of uninflated balloon there I'm just going to tuck it under there and then bring it round. Just round the top and then back down the side. So this is just a way of customising and personalising the sculptures to the particular uh, characteristics of, uh, of your brides. And then I've just got a little tiny pinch twist that I'm just going to position here. So to make the flowers take a 160 and we're going to make um, five very small bubbles and pinch twist them. However you prefer to do that. So just small bubbles and pinch twist. And then we want another little scrap of 160 in a contrasting colour and we just want to make a small bubble and bring that through 
to make the centre of the flower. Like so. And then just cut off this end. And then what I do is I like to get a little piece of lime green or whatever colour green scrap. This is 260 scrap and I just make some little frills by cutting up into the 260. You're just making a few little frills like that and then you can just sort of tuck those into the flower. Wrap that into your bride's hands where they join just into those two little pinch twists and that will hold them there nicely. Pull out the frill that hangs down and make another one of those. So our brides have a little flower each that they're holding. I've drawn their faces. I'm not going to show you how to draw their faces. Um, I learned how to draw faces uh, from Shana Brennan's excellent video making faces. So she is by far the expert on how to draw faces so if that's something that you're worried about then i will include the link to shana's video and you can take it from there you don't need to do a detailed face you could do a you know a, a sort of a simple uh, closed uh, eyelid with the eyelash eyelashes that looks really pretty you can you can build up to to um, drawing a more complex face in the early days, I even did them without a drawn face because I was so anxious um, about the drawing side of things. So I do understand if that's uh, something that troubles you, um, but I think they do look better with, with, with a drawn face. So uh, uh, give it a go and persevere. So they're ready to go on their base. I'll just pop them down there for a second. And uh, I've used um, 11 inch rounds. These are sized to about seven inches these to about eight so anywhere between seven six and a half um you'll, you need a, a fairly good base for this piece particularly as um is so often the case that i i managed to upsell uh, a bouquet of helium balloons um so you know we have the brides on their base and then we get a nice bit of extra height uh, from helium balloons uh, floating above and it, it, it looks really attractive. So I think the, the, the heavier base does complement um, the weight of a decent sized helium bouquet. So I'm going to put the brides onto the base and we're going to use this tail that we, uh, we kept hold of. So just, just use that to wrap around. So here we've got our bride and bride sculpture. Uh, you do need to position them a little bit. Uh, what I've done with this one, I've given them a little bit of extra height. I've put a cluster of four five inch balloons just underneath uh, and at the top of um, these two tiers of uh, uh, 11 inches just to give a bit of extra height. Um, each one's slightly different, sometimes you need that, sometimes you don't. I forgot to mention that underneath this, um, are these two clusters of four, uh, I've got a sand weight, uh, which is my preferred style of weight. And I'll just show you the back here. Um, what I've done here, I you can see that, is we've got the leg coming down into this cluster, the leg of this bride with the dress coming down into this cluster here of the four smaller balloons um, so that she's anchored there too. So there we have our bride and bride sculptures. I hope you like them. <laughs>